All right, so we've just connected the, the system to the cloud. I've shared it with these guys. I'm not telling you the email addresses so you can't bother them. Um, and now we're going to go through and add resources to the system and make sure everything that we want in the demo system is set up, um, recording, set up for motion detection, all that good stuff. So first thing is discover and add IP cameras. So we went over this before um, briefly, um, so we'll go over it again. So open up the software. Um, if you've got auto discovery enabled, uh, then your cameras will have already been in, been identified in the system. If you don't find a camera that you need, you right click on a server, any server, right, and you go add device. Okay, you guys got that? Yes. So add device. Now, if you don't know, uh, number one, if a camera doesn't show up, it means it's not being identified via onvif or via the native SDK. Um, that may be the case, even if it's uh, even if it's compatible, for some reason it's not showing up. So what you can do is, if you know the IP address, you can input the exact IP address and the credentials needed to connect to it. Um, the other thing you can do is run a subnet scan. So if you're using all, um, let's say, Dahua cameras, you can put in a default log and a password for all the Dahua cameras. Uh, and it should be able to find all the Daha cameras on your subnet. So you would want to start with your uh, your starting IP and your ending IP would be whatever the subnets are. So I'm on 192.168.1.0.50. or .50. So I would want to run 192.168.50 from 1 to 255. So I can hit every single address. And then the, the server is going to basically ping all those addresses and look for compatible devices, right? So you can see it right now if I run it, 168.50.1 and 50 to 255. And if I press scan and just leave it on default port, um, it's going to look for any additional devices that are compatible that have not been found yet, right? So you can see I've got a 192.168.50.67 on port 80 coming through for a digital watchdog camera. Um, so it's already been added to the system, but it was discovered, right? So that's pretty much how camera discovery works, if you, manual discovery works, right? Um, since these devices are already uh, detected, what I want to do is go through and give them names that are useful for searching, right? Um, make them make them easier to find, okay? Uh, and then set up recording scheduling on them and everything else. So let's go into one of the cameras here, the Acti, Acti E936. So the Acti E936, regular old camera, if I click on info up here, I can see the streaming, the frame rate. So you guys pull out that camera and look at it. You should see 1920 by 1080, and then it's running somewhere between 15 and 20 frames per second, somewhere between 2.5 and 3.5 and and megabits per second, H.264, and it's showing me the high-res stream. So let's set this camera up for recording. So go to camera settings, right? go to recording um, there is one other thing you can do I forgot to mention real fast which is notice that I don't have any IP addresses for anything if I hover over one of the cameras I can see the name of the camera and the associated IP address that's great right but what if I want to go straight to that camera web page or I just want to see the IP addresses of the servers uh, in the system under local settings dialog here if you go to look and feel you can show show additional info and tree and press apply and all your IP addresses will show up in the tree for you, which is pretty useful when you're configuring a system, right? Um, it'll also show you the roles of the different people in the system as well uh, with additional info in the tree. So it's kind of nice. Okay, so right-click, camera settings. We're going to go to recording. Uh, we're going to turn on in recording. Um, and I want to record this one always at 30 frames a second and medium quality. It's set up on the NX2 right now, so it's going to record to the storage on that device, right? Um, some other things about recording, I can change the quality. We went over this in the in the other training. I can set I can set an exact bit rate target. Um, I can change the schedule to show me frames per second or quality as well. Um, kind of nice. Um, then I have fixed archive leaf link, so I can have a minimum number of days to keep archive, or a maximum number of days. In some markets, it's illegal to keep video more than like 30 days. So that's why max days exists. 
And a minimum days, basically, if you want to definitely have like seven days of archive and you don't really care after that, you can set a minimum so that it can try and force it. Now, with minimum, if you don't have enough storage, it can't store that. You can't force it to store more than it can possibly store. So, something to think about. Uh, for motion recording, you can set up a pre-recording and post-recording as well. Um, so, that's nice. Um, so, I've got the camera recording set up. Under the general tab, just to go over this real quickly, your first thing is your name, right? So this is to me is my back right camera, that's what I call it, back right, right? Um, the vendor's Acti, the model's E936, you can see the firmware version, you can see the IP address, you can run a ping test um, to see if the camera's online and responding, right? It'll open up a, a, a terminal dialog for you. Um, you can go straight to the web page of the camera Right. If you click on that link, it'll open it in your default browser. Um, you can see the MAC address. Um, you can see the camera ID. Now, the camera ID is, a, is a, something that's used for the development and the API calls. And we put it here for developers to be nice and convenient. You can also see the primary stream and the secondary stream that's being pulled from the camera into the system. Right. So, uh, again, for developers, but also for us to test if we're having problems with the camera to know which streams are being pulled. Right. Um, under image control, you can set a fixed aspect ratio. Certainly leave it auto. Um, if your camera's installed upside down for some reason and you don't have the ability to switch it in the camera, uh, you can set up a default rotation in NX Witness as well so that when you pull that camera in, it automatically rotates that video. Um, if there's audio available on the camera, you can also enable audio. Right, um, and then authentication is your is your password and uh, login or your username and login for password for connecting to that camera directly. You need this in order for the camera to work. Right. So under motion detection, when you go in, you'll see that most cameras are set to five by default. So you guys in the motion detection view right now? Yeah. So you see the motion that's taking place as Nick is moving and Cat is kind of moving, right? So this is server-side motion detection, um, and you can set up different zones with different sensitivity. Since this is my office, I don't really want, care about people walking around in the office so much. I just want to know when someone comes in the door. So what I'm going to do is draw some motion on that door, uh, and then I'm going to press apply. All right, and that's it. I set up motion. Um, fisheye will go over later on a fisheye camera. Uh, the advanced tab um, is the settings from the camera itself. So this is the same type of settings you would see in the camera browser interface. Some cameras have more, some cameras have less, depending on what they expose via their ONVIF or their SDK. Right? But this one has primary streams, secondary streams, so I can change and modify the uh, bit rate and the size. Um, it's got exposure settings, extra settings audio settings and nice most of the time on cameras is this maintenance button uh, you can reboot cameras if you're having an issue or you can soft reset them which means you reset the camera to factory default except for the IP address or you can do even do a hard reset on most cameras which is put it back to factory defaults um, if you do a hard reset some cameras have static IP addresses so they're not going to be found they're not going to be on the right subnet so you might have to use the manufacturer's tool to find them um, so it's best idea generally to do a soft reset. And expert settings. Um, generally don't touch these unless you know what you're doing. Um, as it says right across the top in red. But keep uh, camera settings is keep camera streams and profile settings. What that means is if I have a camera and I maybe I had a previous system like a Milestone or a Genesec where I had to set up the camera recording or the, the camera stream in the camera itself and then I just record that. We can do the same thing. So if you want to not have NX Witness optimize your camera settings or manage your frame rate and resolution, you can set it up in the camera and click on this, and then whatever setup in the camera is what NX Witness will record. So basically, we become the bucket that catches the water, right? Um, calculate bitrate per GOP. GOP is a group of pictures. Um, some cameras have. Uh, some strange ways they do stuff that, that might be applicable to some of them. Um, secondary stream, you can disable the secondary stream. Keep in mind if you disable the secondary stream, you also disable motion detection. Uh, and you also disable adaptive scaling. So not generally a, a smart thing to do. 
Um, motion detection, you could force motion detection. Some cameras only have one stream, one high-res stream. Um, you can force your server to do motion detection on a high-res stream. It's just going to increase your CPU usage a lot. Uh, archive, um, you can tell it not to archive the primary or the secondary stream. Uh, and then media streaming, you can change the transport method uh, to try and get a camera to work from TCP to UDP. Sometimes it works. Um, you can also set up custom media ports. Um, you can trust the camera's timestamp as well to give the camera uh, time precedence. Um, and then logical ID down here, this is for um, developers. Um, instead of having to type that long camera ID that you saw on the first page, um, you can come in and set up a number for the camera, which makes it easier for some third-party systems to do integration. All right? Uh, do you guys have any questions on the camera settings dialog? Okay, from the camera settings dialog in general as well, you can do three things. You can show on layout, which means you just press play and it'll open that camera on the layout. Uh, you can look at the event log uh, for that camera. Um, and you can also go in and look at the rules that are set up on that camera. It'll apply an automatic filter uh, to let you see. So that's kind of nice. All right. So that's how you set up a standard camera, right? Uh, if we look at PTZs, uh, Canon here is a PTZ. It's an old PTZ, so it has some uh, quirks. Let's see if it's working, and it's not. So what I'm going to do is go into camera settings, go into that advanced thing I talked about, and do a system reboot real fast. That tends to fix it. Um, that Canon kind of firmware is kind of bad. So we'll come back to that one here in a second. We got Dalhua outside. Um, do me a favor, Nick. Set up recording on Dalhua, the Dalhua camera. Uh, I'm going to call it Tahua People Watcher. Cat, uh, go into the DWC MF21 camera, the one that's in front of you. Okay. okay. It's upside down. So do me a favor, set the default rotation to be 180 degrees, and then name it um, the DW side camera, or I'll name it. Um, ain't fine. Uh, why don't you set up the IPN 302 HD for recording? Um, and that one is what I call the VCA front cam. And I will set up my outside Hanwha front door cam. Now, one thing to notice, guys, is that if you want to set up your cameras, if you want to set up recording on multiple cameras, Right, see this DW camera, this other DW camera. I want to set up recording on both of them. I can highlight both cameras and it will give me the option of setting up recording at the same time with the same settings, right? Even if they're on different servers. So, pretty cool. So, I've got those two set up. Let me see which one's which. When you're on the, when you've got a camera that's displayed and you've got it selected, it will be highlighted blue in the tree, right? So, as you see, I switch between these two cameras. You can tell which camera you're on at a given point in time by that. So this one is DW Fisheye, and this one is DW Tony's Back, and camera settings on Hanwha. Let me set that one up as well. DW Cat Cam. Did you set up recording on that one yet, Cat? Infan VCA still doesn't look like it's recording. Yeah, no, it's recording. All right, let me see. VCA is recording. DW just started recording. Let's see if the Canon came back on and started uh, cooperating. It doesn't look like it did, so I'm going to do a hard reset on that one. That's all right. And okay. Fish ID warping. Um, fish ID warping, you need to set up something special on. So if you right-click on that fish eye camera, right? Sorry, if you click on it first right now, you'll see that there's a little PTZ icon, right? 
that doesn't do anything. The PTZ icon is on there because it's been detected as a fisheye camera, right? Um, so if you go to camera settings dialog and you go to fisheye for that camera, you can see fisheye has not been enabled and it hasn't been calibrated, right? So over here, guys, if I click on fisheye dewarping, right, and I click auto calibrate, it will find the edges of the fisheye lens. Now it works for panamorph lenses, it works for three straight up circular lenses. You can really adjust this thing to match exactly how the camera looks, right? Exactly how the lens looks. So when you're ready, this is a wall mount actually. I'm gonna change that to wall mount. We got ceiling mount, wall mount, floor mount. You can also mount, you can also change the angle correction if it's off a little bit. So press apply when you're done. Okay, and you'll see that the view from the fisheye camera has changed into like a PDZ view here on my desktop. You guys get the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So once you're in fisheye, you can go in, you can look at um, 90 degrees if it's a wall mount or 80 degrees, right? Uh, you can also look at if it's a ceiling mount or a floor mount, you can look at 360 degrees as well. So that's how fisheye cameras are set up. Other than that, not really much else to do. That's how you can configure your cameras for recording and viewing. Um, and so for the next part, we're going to look at uh, adding RTSP and HTTP streams. So next video.